Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Movie Show. We are going to be reviewing Ooh. what the hell? What, what the, the hell? hell. <laughs> <laughs> that made no sense. Yes, that's okay, Bobby. <laughs> Wait, I respect the move. I all meant right. what you said. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Eliza. we've all seen it. Yes. Wow, yeah. yes. that's that's good. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. good start. It, it seemed like it took a forever for us yeah. to all I know. see it. But it it did take a while. It. Why do you think that was? Do you think you were some of you were subconsciously fighting seeing mm -hmm. I think for me, yeah. <laughs> for a while, actually, to be completely honest, for a while I was subconsciously fighting it. I did not want to go vegetarian or vegan. You're scared. I You're was scared. A little yeah. scaredy cat. I liked my meat. <laughs> but uh I'm proud to say now that I am full vegetarian. Oh. And I don't think I'm ever gonna eat meat again. Wow. Wow. Unless it was <laughs> <maybe, laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, really maybe some seafood here and there. <laughs> but uh yes, yeah, so for me it took a while because I was kinda scared. But yeah, um eventually I I bucked up and I watched the movie. Cool. Uh, millions of people have watched the movie, which mm -hmm. surprised That's me. Awesome. That yes. is awesome. Wow. I feel like there's a lot of people who watch the movie who are now looking for debunking videos to help them not have to do what they just learned. <laughs> yes. <to> do, <laughs> yes. Right? Like, I find like, myself even trying to find if, oh, if right. the research is wrong. Let me yeah. find some flaws in it so yeah. I don't have to do it. Right. Right. Exactly. And I guess the biggest thing that's kind of bummed me out since watching Cowspiracy, now what the health, is that when you realize that this is probably the right thing to do, and then you think, the hardest part about the whole thing is that I don't have society helping me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? And I didn't grow up with any way to make this food or go out and buy this food. It's mm -hmm. very hard to go be, to follow this vegan diet. Right. Mm -hmm. right. right? That's, that, that's the hardest part. Like, cerebrally, mm -hmm. you can actually kind of see the arguments and go, mm -hmm. oh, this makes sense. And yeah. then you go to the fridge and you're like, crap, <laughs> yeah. how do I live this right. New right. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All I have is a head of iceberg lettuce. That's right. not enough. Yeah. Forget it. <laughs> Call the whole thing off. <laughs> We're done here. I'm going back to meet. <laughs> right. Or let's go out and find some dinner tonight. Yeah. And what, what are you going to find in your mm -hmm. typical strip mall? You're going to find that you can't eat at any of those places. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Now you're stuck. Now you have to completely change your entire life, and you get angry. That's the yeah. first. I think the first thing you go through is like. Maybe it's denial, I don't know. And it's then, like the stages of grief. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's really the stage. It yeah, felt like yeah. something know, died. Mm -hmm. Right. It's I like definitely I agree. was in denial, yep. and then I was just sad and depressed. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's why you, then you go looking for debunking videos, so you can be like, well, can I just eat some meat? Yeah. Can I just, yeah. Well, it's also just because, like, the, the, I, the whole set of information that you get from the documentary just challenges everything that you've mm. been grown up, you know, yeah. all the things that people tell you when you're growing up. Like, the, the thing that blew my mind the most was, like, the, the fact that diabetes was mostly from the meat and dairy as opposed to the sugar, which is, like, yeah. everyone always says growing up, oh, don't eat too much sugar because you'll get diabetes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm. That was definitely one of the bigger shockers for me. Um, but I guess before we get into it, should we do our, our uh, summary of the movie and give our review so that people can... Yeah, so, I mean, maybe many of you are coming to this having seen Cowspiracy. That was uh, mm -hmm. Kip Anderson's first movie. Um, and so... How did this movie feel compared to maybe that movie? Like, was this full of infographics to you? Was this full of interviews? I gotta, I gotta say, as someone who's been vegan for quite a while now, um, this movie shocked me Ooh. in a lot wow. of things. Um, there was a lot of yeah. stuff in here that I didn't know, and I feel like I've kind of been embedded in this stuff for a while, and there was things that had my jaw on the floor. I was like, are you kidding me? Wow. These are things that I've believed my entire life and mm -hmm. had no idea. You know, so in that respect, I think this movie was better than Cowspiracy to me. Wow. Yeah. Um, this, some of the stuff is just like insane. Like I couldn't believe it when I heard it. Yeah, the first movie is telling you do you know change your diet for the sake of the planet. Right. Mm -hmm. And we know that's not going to work for most people, <laughs> right. right? They're going to be like, screw the planet. <laughs> this movie is telling you change your diet for you. Yep. Yeah. Just for your own health. Right. And yeah. a pretty strong argument for mm -hmm. many people. Yeah. So. Um, Maybe what we should do now is just like put up the review total. Yeah, average here. rating right there. If you're listening on the podcast, you're at a definite disadvantage because yes. you don't know mm -hmm. anything. It's hey, a mystery. You, you, you never know. You got to look at the channel. You got to sometimes come back to the channel. Yes. Yeah. Uh, or me and Brent will insert a overdub here. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> this is the average rating. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Any other things we can give out before we don't want to spoil it for you? Yeah. Uh, it's not about eating. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess we should just jump right in. Yeah, yeah let's, let's go. Let's, 
Pull the gloves off. Let's get down to business. Let's do it. Here we go. Yeah, so, I mean, let's talk about diabetes. Um, that's, so, I mean, the, the movie starts, again, just like in Cowspiracy, mm -hmm. with Kip talking to the head of the American Diabetes yes. Association. Who is basically the twin of the guy who starts out in the first movie. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. He's, he's like the Sierra Club's brother guy. Yeah. Yeah. He and, is. and he's a guy who wants to talk to you all day mm -hmm. about diabetes and what we're doing about it and the stats and stuff. And mm -hmm. then you ask him one question and you right. can get him to leave the room. Yeah. And what is that question? How does diet right. affect yeah. diabetes? Yes. I will not answer that question, yes. sir. I am out oh of here. Yes. You got it. <laughs> So gone. mad. Like, yes. Yeah. He was just like, like the first, like Cowspiracy, he didn't really get mad. He was just kind of like, whoa. Uh, you know, like, yeah. like yeah. offensive and but it like almost this, felt like there was something that he wasn't supposed to say. Yeah. Right, yeah, no, this They're guy. telling us. Yeah. It was literally like, here's the study. He's like, nope, I'm not going to look at it. Nope, nope, I'm going to get out of I here. I think the case in a lot of these interviews is that they know that they don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's a cover up that they know about. I just, mm -hmm. I think that the, the cover up is bigger than them. Oh, well, I, no, I could no, get on board that it goes. Like I could get on board that it goes higher than them, but the, I got to believe that this yeah. most of these people have some idea. So I, think yeah, some like, idea. I mean, the fact that he gets out of there that fast right. based on yeah. one question tells you he knows something. He's not yeah. clueless. Yeah, right. exactly. I, especially when later in the movie they show all the different organizations, yeah. the mm -hmm. AMA and the Diabetes and Association, and, and who sponsors them. Mm -hmm. right. And um, it's clear that most of their money comes from groups that don't want you to know about eating their food. That was right. definitely one of the scariest things about the movies. Mm -hmm. How many of these groups go directly against the things that they're trying to right. fight for? Mm -hmm. Like directly against. Like things that are highly correlated. Not even like things that, that were surprising to me mm -hmm. um, with heart disease. Because so those groups get to put their stamp of approval on whatever, a yeah. poster, a yep. video, then those things get right to our school children, right mm -hmm. to right. our society. Like, oh, well, the American such and such association says this, so yeah. let's show you kids. Yep. Right. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. like the Got Milk posters that they, they used to right. have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you right. get celebrities on there. Right. It's like, I trust this celebrity, you know. And that's what I'm talking about. So your whole life, you're brought up to think that this is good, my two cups of milk a day. I mean, in fact, most doctors in your little pre- uh, inspection thing say do you how many cups of milk do you eat yep. drink every day mm -hmm. and and like these are the basic questions like oh I drink my two cups every yep. day I never <laughs> drank milk as a kid I was always you know talked down to because of it people were yeah. like wow well, you should be drinking your milk it'll keep your bones nice and strong right. that is false <laughs> that is false completely false no after you went vegan I remember we like didn't have milk in the house like even if we had dairy it wasn't in milk form and the doctor asked like how many cups of milk do you drink and I was like well, actually, we've gone vegan, and um, it's not good for me to drink, so I don't drink any. And they're like, I'm just going to put down two cups. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One. <Why> <laughs> oh, okay. Right. So, okay. So when the American Dairy Association checks my records, yeah. everything will be fine. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. When they come looking for us. Yeah. yeah. Dairy scary. Scary. It's a bit scary. <laughs> I need to get my funding. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yes. Well, very scary. So, I mean, again, this kind of goes to... If America wanted to solve a problem, like put a man on the moon, we can mm -hmm. do it in 10 years. If yeah. we want to solve diabetes, oh, we just can't solve it again this decade. Mm -hmm. Sorry. That kind of explains why it's happening. <laughs> and one yeah. of the scariest things about uh, the facts that they state at the beginning is that one in three, one of every three Americans will have diabetes in the next 25 years. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the way that things are going. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so clear that it's all about disease prevention. But the problem with a lot of these companies is they're not focused on prevention. They're focused right. on fixing the problem after the fact. Right. right? And because it, that's it, where the money comes from. Right, exactly. Like it plays in with the, with the pharmacy stuff. Like once you get them on the drugs, they have to pay for the drugs for the rest of their life. Yeah. And so it's just mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm just going to collect my money from you every month. And, and the that's pharmaceutical be great. companies are probably the biggest money monglers that there are mm -hmm. in, in this country. Like when it comes to things that people need and depend on. Like right. a lot of people depend on these drugs. Well, let's talk about the drugs. So one of the most powerful parts of the movie for me yeah. were the individuals that he went and visited right. yep. who would um, show him their cupboard full of drugs, yep. and they were having a hard time, right? So we have, uh, we have one woman who was basically like, I, you know, my doctor put me on all these drugs, and I can barely you know, get up in the morning without pain. Um, and then we proceed to see her a couple weeks later. Yep, literally on, two weeks yeah. later. On a vegan diet. Yep. She's walking outside. She's happy. Right. She's smiling. She's gotten rid of, I think on this case, half of her drugs. Yep. Yeah. Um, and that was just two weeks of eating a vegan diet. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. two weeks, 14 yeah. days yeah. of eating plants. And that's just plant-based too. Yeah. I mean, like that's ridiculous how fast it can change your metabolism. I think it's funny when you think about how quickly things go in and out of the body. Mm. And it's so fast how you can release your toxins just by going full, like going uh, completely like cold turkey. 
Mm-hmm. And um, well, or <laughs> cold. <laughs> what would you say in this case? <laughs> Me and Zach <laughs> Mack here. Cold spinach. <laughs> cold spinach. <laughs> um, so yeah, cold beyond meat. <laughs> yes. So um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I what I was say. that to me was powerful. Seeing a bunch of people, it wasn't just one woman; it was a right. bunch of people who did that. So that, like, was I think it was cool in the movie that he had a bunch of different approaches to get to you, oh, so absolutely. like to find what might work for you. That I think would get to a lot of people who yeah. are like, I'm kind of like that person. Yeah. Wait, maybe I'll just try it. Right, right. like yeah. doesn't cost any money. That was right. the thing that he also went to them after two weeks. It wasn't two years. Right, you know, mm-hmm. it was just two weeks. That's nothing. Right. right. Yeah. And I, I feel difference. like when you are on death's doorstep, mm. you will be willing to open your mind to try something because right. you're like, what's the harm? Right. And those people were seeing a, a benefit. The rest of Americans, the, the healthy 20-year-olds, they're not on death's doorstep. Yeah. They don't think they have a problem. They don't want to talk about the possibility of heart disease or diabetes. So they're far less likely, I think, to, have, to be affected by this movie because mm-hmm. I think they're like I'm young and healthy I can keep eating chicken nuggets I've noticed that about myself when I was watching the movie I was trying to picture myself at the end of the line later on in life when it's at like at the end of the line at the end of the line you know at, at the end the of the road. Door. but literally I mean what's the common thing I see. lies are all over you yes. what, what's the common thing with all the characters the other people that they showed not mm. characters the people mm. that they showed, they were all old. Yeah. yeah. They well, were all on death's door. But those are the people oh. who were like who were the, the most significantly improved, right? Yeah. But if you look at um like I think one of the reasons that I liked it so much was just like at the end when they started showing like all the athletes, oh like there God. was that one yes. dude who was like my, like, I don't know, like a guy. professional ninja or whatever. Is yeah. like, oh, yeah. I want to be him. Sassy. Right, yeah, no, like that guy was super... He's my like, age, mm-hmm. and that guy, that dude is... I mean, he was your age? Yeah. No, I yeah. think he was He's my... I think we're talking about the Yeah, we might be talking about it. We're talking, like, um... The, the guy who was, was like, like a... Jo- and doing yeah. Like, doing weird... Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah he was. He was 47. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. see, this yeah. is the point. This I is the point. Went, I honest to God, I thought he was like 27. No. Like, I'm so... Because yeah. I oh, picked man. up on his age immediately. I was yeah. like, oh my God, I wish I could look yeah, like so him. Yeah, so I thought he was like... <laughs> I thought there was like a few other people, because I remember you said that earlier in the week, and I, I just assumed that was like a few of the other old people in the... Uh, well, <laughs> okay. You're I mean, like, good. But it's a good point. I mean, right. all the people that the one who did the uh, the five Ironmans. Oh yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's, yeah. that's yeah. honestly what, who I and thought you were talking the, about. Yeah. The NFL like linebacker. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, that's really powerful. Yeah. He was huge, and he yeah. said he feels better. And he was like, he said he was like, yeah. Before I was a vegan, I was benching like three fifteen. Now I'm benching like four sixty. I was like, what? A really, yeah. a really that's powerful crazy. part in that yeah. section of the movie where they what someone was talking about the. Uh, how you hear about these older people having heart attacks, and it's like, oh, but they were so healthy. They were always at the gym. They were so lean. You don't have to be fit to be healthy. Right. Like basically, like I know a lot of people who were in great shape physically, but ended up having heart attacks mm-hmm. and almost dying because of it. Mm-hmm. And it's it has everything to do with your bloodstream. It's right. in your body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, my wife's a teacher, and she would come home many times and tell me about some parent who dropped dead. Mm-hmm. Who is not that old because they had you know ten year old children and yeah. it, it it's scary you hear about it and just like it can just happen to anyone at any time and yes it can because of the American diet but if you know that if you understand how the American diet works you can then realize why all these people are dropping dead right. it's because of whatever they had you know yeah. cardiovascular right. disease I mean heart disease is the number one killer of Americans it, you yeah. would think that we would be focusing all of our attention on this. I thought it was really interesting that it was um, when they talked about milk a little bit, and they touched on this in Cowspiracy as well, yeah. but like how um, I think of all mammals, like humans had the lowest um, protein level in their in, um, in breast milk. Yes. Right, yes. Right, so which is crazy. So cow's milk is nine grams, and uh, you know it's nine to one ratio, basically, yeah. Yeah. To, mm-hmm. to, to human breast milk. Nine to one ratio. Right. And like the, that's crazy, and it's especially crazy when you think about like what the purpose of, of breast milk is, right? It's to it's basically like, hey, we may, we need to make this thing grow as fast as possible, yeah. and it works. Sure. Look at right. the average American that it works yeah. it's as designed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's funny, like you think about this, like okay, it is the perfect supplement for humans. It's literally designed by nature for humans, and it has a low amount of protein. Right. It's like okay, mm-hmm. so why aren't we human breast milk? You mean human right. breast milk? Yeah. Why aren't we taking that and realizing like? Okay, we clearly don't need the amount of protein that they've been telling us we need. Like the doctor said that the nutritionist said, I've never had anyone come in and say, "Oh, like you have a low amount of protein. Right. You have a protein right. uh, deficiency." deficiency. Right, yeah. It's like 
I've never heard that either. And but yeah, they always say, eat your protein. That your is protein. almost the number one argument you'll hear from almost right. anyone on the street. Joe Blow on the street, when you tell him something about veganism, will go, protein? Yeah. yeah. Problem. That's, that's like the, the first thing that would... Meat's like, healthy yeah. as protein. When I started talking to my parents about this, right, like, because they're, they're not even close to going vegan, because... Mm. But, well, <laughs> but like when I was talking about it, my mom like the first thing my mom said was like, "Well, I mean, you got to worry about protein then a little more." And I was like, "Well, yeah, I mean, like kind of." Hey, have you ever had? No, I've never problem. like mm-hmm. never. Well, I mean, never a diagnosed protein problem mm-hmm. or even like a self-diagnosed one. Yeah. But I don't know. It's just like it right, doesn't I mean, seem that bad. Right. I mean, if you were low in protein, you would start to feel very lethargic. First of all, so like that's it's not like you would just be walking around and you wouldn't know it. Like you right. would be. Feeling it. Even yeah. so, I mean, you can get protein from vegetables. Oh, my God. So, right. yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the, yeah. if you take any leafy green, dark leafy green vegetable, like a spinach or a romaine lettuce, you're going to get more protein per pound in that than you are in steak. Like, yes. mm-hmm. and then people go, like, oh, so if you eat this much lettuce. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like, um, you're used to preparing it in a certain way that you mm-hmm. think that way. But, like, cook down a spinach, for instance. Oh, and yeah. You you can put tons of spinach in something and it doesn't take up much space. You or know? you can like, put it in a smoothie and it takes up no space. When you look at the uh, the part of the movie where they talk about the strongest mammals on on the earth or the strongest right. animals, you got rhinoceroses, elephants, gorillas. Right. They're all huge, and they all have the same jaws as we do. Exactly. And they all eat plants. Well, I think I there's think- a disconnect. Once you start hearing that, you go, well, if that's true, if all these things are true then you're missing something because how could we have been taught this for all this time? Mm -hmm. So you either have to think that there's still that missing thing that all of us vegans don't know, or you have to realize that you've been lied to. And Mm -hmm. no one wants to think they've been lied to because that's a scary thought to be like. Because why would you be lied to? Right. Why would our government come up with a plate and show us how to eat if that was wrong? Mm -hmm. How could that be? So like, when did this, when did this whole like meat is the right thing to eat kind of start? Like, because you know, like, I remember you were talking at the beginning of the week, like, maybe the whole caveman thing, maybe they didn't actually eat meat as much as we have been told, and, you know, where did that actually start? Because I can imagine it might have started, you know, back when we started farming, right? Because if that was the best way, like, if people figured out an efficient way to farm, then they could have been like, oh, well, let's just t- tell everyone that this is what they're supposed to eat. I mean, historically, it seems to have happened after the major wars. Um, when you have all these, you're not making bombs anymore, but you need to get rid of your nitrogen, you sell it to farmers as fertilizer. And then once you start to have this miracle fertilizer on your crops that just makes everything green up so fast, then it's like, oh, let's just go to monoculture. Corn, soybeans. Right. And then we got all the soybeans and corn, it's so cheap, let's find a way to use it. Uh, Corn syrup, feed it to animals, right? And so it, it, it creates this whole side food chain of cheap meat, and you're like, this is freaking awesome. Yeah. Except you forgot that you're depleting your soils, and now you're feeding everyone things that are bad for them yeah but let's now cover that up yeah just keep putting holes in the dike right. you know like cover, right. cover that up it's okay. like it's like getting band-aids instead of treating the right. core core mm. issue and then mm. so you've gotten these industries that are so wealthy they don't want to give that up um and so now you've got this problem we see on this other side that we talk about all the time with electric cars it's like you've got a problem of just letting people know that there's a great solution but now those industries would have to suffer mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and the problem i guess Again, going back to, like, if everyone would just for a week believe this, Mm -hmm. then we could start to solve the problem pretty quickly. We could start having restaurants that served us food that's good for us Mm -hmm. in our supermarkets and schools. And before you know it, we'd all just be, it would be a thing of the past. We wouldn't even think about it. It wouldn't be a vegan diet. It would just be our diet. Right. Mm -hmm. But instead, every day we go out and it's like, okay, lunch. There's only two places I can eat. (laughs) Right. That's like, we were having that conversation today at lunch today. We, <laughs> right. were like, we were like, okay, so there's Panera, Chipotle, and Clover. Right, mm-hmm. and now I'm going to go out to eat with my family or my friends, and I can't, we're not going to agree on where to eat. Right, right. right. And then people look at you funny when you, when you say, oh, I'm not going to have meat today, or, or if, right. it, if yeah. they even right. see that you're not eating it, they're like, why are you eating it? They right. take so much offense, it's like offensive. It's personal. Yeah. Right, well, because you basically just told them that, that you, you're, you're telling them the, the, world they live in is not what they are seeing. And that right. they're not healthy and you are. Yeah, right. And it's, I get that. I get that, that there's a double side to it. And like, it's it's just, we have to be, I think a lot of people have to be empathetic to the other side because everyone, like one of the women said, like everyone will learn in their own time. It's, it's you have to push 
as much as you can, but people learn in their own time. You can't force it upon someone. I wish people would just be more inquisitive about it as I opposed know. to fighting it. Right. Like, instead of being like, why are you doing that? Be like, right. oh, why are you doing that? I think that? that's just a basic human problem. Or just making you, like, feel terrible about yourself for doing it. Like, yeah. okay, well, that's not true at all. Yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. hilarious that you think that. Like, yeah. I had this movie on, like, the last 20 minutes of it. My dad walks in and is like, what do you think of this? Like, because he doesn't agree with it at all. Mm-hmm. Right? And then he was like, oh, here's all these sources that are, like, you know, de- debunking all of this. And it's like, well, can I just watch the movie, please? <laughs> like, right. I can I just, like, the you know, discover it myself? The, right. the, yeah. the bunkers. Yeah, I mean, let's talk. I mean, the great thing about the internet is that if you aren't sure, there's plenty of sites to go to to check out both sides. You can go to right. someone like Mike the Vegan, and he, he goes through, finds studies upon studies to show you. So, and then you can just use your own radar. You can decide, like, does this sound right to me or not? I think what I liked about the movie a lot was people like Dr. Greger who are in the movie, who I've met personally um, and read his book. And these are smart people that he that, that Kip finds for the movie to talk to us, right? These mm-hmm. smart experts. Watch some debunk videos that, that purport to debunk this movie and see if you believe their arguments yeah. because that's a perfectly valid it's way. It's harder to, to believe, though. I mean, I, I will say, like, I did a look into both sides as someone who's in the middle, and it's harder to believe the facts that, are stating that this movie is wrong right. Right. because there isn't as much evidence that supports it. There's them. a lot of this that goes on when they debunk. There's yeah. a lot of... <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. isn't science. Yeah. It's right. laughing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's, it's just supposed to make people like feel better, make right. them feel like mm-hmm. they're right. one of them. And, yeah. and let's just get to that. It is psychology, right? Totally. It is this cognitive dissonance that we talked about with Cowspiracy. It is that you don't want to believe this because if you do, you have to face a lot of other realities mm-hmm. that you don't want to face. Yeah. Right. And so know that about psychology because that is who we are, um, and know that as we get the internet and ideas flowing more, you're going to have this happen a lot more. Yeah. Not just about food. Right. Yeah. About a lot of things. About a lot of things. Can we talk about the uh, the North Carolina section of the movie? Yes. Oh, yeah. That depressing. was probably the most depressing part yes. of the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's for a number of reasons, I guess. I just thought it was crazy how much, like, it affects their lives in such a negative way, and yet we've, like... People don't really talk about it, right? Like there was, I thought one of the most powerful parts to me was like, um, there was that one guy who was just like, you know, I was, sometimes I just, you know, I go out, go to church and I walk outside and it's like, well, got to change spraying. my clothes now because yeah. they smell like pig. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what? Yeah. That's crazy. The fact that the guy sprays on Sundays mm-hmm. is ridiculous. Right. And I think that it's really um, kind of scary, like where it's located in an area of color, in an area where yeah. like they're not, they don't care about, you know, what, who lives there, right. uh, they're affecting all these people. And uh, not only the, um, the human rights to that those people are not, you know, caring mm-hmm. about, but the animal rights, the pigs, yeah. feeding yeah. the pigs dead pigs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that, that was a little Letting them up. rot. And the fact that one of the things that was very striking to me was this, the scene where they showed the, the pigs in the box right. rotting. I mean, the fact that you water field, you, you fertilize fields with fecal matter, mm-hmm. you know, uh, un nothing been treated like just shooting it yep. onto fields and right in front of people's houses um, and that I guess in the state of North Carolina was it that pigs outnumber people yes yeah. Um, yep. wow yeah um, so yeah I mean we have this whole culture around bacon put bacon on everything mm-hmm. bacon right. bacon it's so awesome <laughs> um, and then it's like well maybe you should have to in the corner of that video of that commercial like show the bacon being you know the fecal matter being sprayed all that and, stuff. And, one thing I found really shocking too. Yeah. One thing I found super shocking too. Speaking of bacon and sausage, the fact that they're both carcinogens. Yeah. Talk about that for yes. a second. Yeah. That was. And that they're classified in the same level as like things like cigarettes. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. We want to find the cure, wow. everyone. Right. We yeah. want to find the cure to cancer. Uh, we've already found the cure to cancer. It's not that complicated. Yeah. There's no magic pill. You just change your diet, and cancer goes away. Right. Because your body is fighting cancer. Every minute of every day. It's not this foreign substance. It's in your body all the time. Right. And your body takes care of it. But when you overload your body, yeah. you can't It's like he said, that. one cancer cell doesn't never kill that. Right. right. We, we, make it, we make it seem like it's this, you know, like, you've got cancer yes. now. <laughs> like, no, it's, it's, it's everywhere. And yes. we're, our body's very good at handling it. But yeah, yeah that's why one can, in every four Americans die of cancer. Right. right. That, was, that was one of the other statistics. It's like, it's crazy... Just how little, like, you know, it's like one in three, one in four. That's such a high chance. It's one of any. Right, like, yeah. like two, yeah. maybe. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think that this movie 
is going to be shown in health classes, like uh, high school no health way. classes. No way. At least not. Not, anytime not, soon, not, a, not at a public years. school, yeah. at least. Why do you think that is? Like, the, the, I think what they're now showing in health classes is a movie that came out at least 10 years ago, right, which was the... Um, the Al Gore. Uh, the Super Size Me. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, right. yeah, they are showing um, that. And when yeah, that came out, that's just saying that. don't go to McDonald's. Yeah, right, which but is like you know how shocking that was when that movie came out. Mm-hmm. It was not a mainstream movie. It was yeah. not like show this to your kids' movie. Right. And now I think almost mm-hmm. every health class I've heard of, at least in the Northeast, yeah. that's shown a lot. Right. Um, I wonder if in ten years yeah. this movie will be shown. Yeah. So in ten years, I think it's not completely unreasonable to think that we could start to see something like that happening. I, I, I mean, think. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Because, I mean, that's the only thing that gives me hope is that if, mm-hmm. if we are on some kind of learning trend in this country and yep. this movie will someday be somewhat mainstream, yep. and then... I hope that it's exponential. I trend. Right. You know, like, ten years ago, we or a few years ago, we started watching The Super Size Me, which was filmed ten years ago, and maybe in five years we'll start seeing this. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, let's talk about smoking. So in 1965, mm-hmm. these, the uh, Surgeon General reported that smoking was bad for Americans. Yeah. And since then, uh, the latest data was 2014, I think, we've seen a 70% drop yeah. in smoking. Yeah. So, obviously, getting information out there does change habits and things mm-hmm. do it change. It works eventually. It works yeah. eventually. Right. It took a while. You have to change it, the like the people who are grown up with that information. It's hitting them young. Right, right yeah. No, it's, it's like you have to have a generation that's raised knowing that that's a bad thing yeah. for it to actually work because then... Otherwise, you're going to get these people who are, like, still raising their kids and smoking because they're like, well, I've done it all my life and I'm not dead yet. So yeah. mm. when I was in, like, second grade, I used to watch those films in, in school. Really hard to watch films about women and men smoking and dying. Mm-hmm. And they would the person who the, would be in the star of the movie would die at the end. Mm-hmm. And it would freak you out. And, and now you don't see that many kids smoking. It's right. not to say you don't see many kids vaping. But <laughs> it's a whole different that's thing. That's a different but, thing, yeah. Um, but... Um, that's the thing is I was taught this at a young age, so it's always been bad for me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, our age group, we, we've sort of seen that. Right. And I think that the only way we can, can get this type of movie to work is, like Nick said, on younger kids. It's right. not going to work on anyone uh, near our age unless they're willing to watch it right. uh, neutrally and maybe change their minds after. Yeah, cause you have like, to go into it open-minded. Yeah, no, definitely, for sure. Because, you know, for a lot of you know, people my age... It's yeah. and like some of my friends really are like they're like oh you know I know it's not good for you so I'll just yeah I'll just cut out red meat yeah. or something mm-hmm. like that right but it's because we've been raised and it's like yeah this is just how I eat right so if you get them when they're like you know get them, get them when they're five yeah or something like that <laughs> well, like like perfect. get all the kindergarten teachers out there show this movie to your well maybe not all the parts <laughs> but like part of this movie to the kids in the class right they're gonna go home and they're gonna be like. I want to be a vegan, and the parents are going to be like, ah, oh, fine, <laughs> and, that's, and then we're going to fix the world. Yes. Yeah, I mean, so do you think that you could get someone in your life, a friend or a family member who doesn't agree with this, to sit down and watch this movie, or do you who think they... completely that, doesn't agree with yeah, it? Yeah, well, I don't know, compl- I mean, I just someone who basically is, you know, doesn't eat this way, mm-hmm. or do you think yeah. it's just too... Hard? They wouldn't believe, uh, anyone I know wouldn't believe it. So you don't think any of the movie would stick? Like, because I'm just thinking... Parts of the movie aren't really science. They're just like, here's some vegans that are really healthy, yeah. or here's some right. sick people who got healthier in See, two weeks. See, the thing that I think the success stories in the movie are the parts that I found were the most affecting, and mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like that part would be most likely to get through to people. And the athletes. Yes. Yes. Like. yes. I mean, yes well, there's, like you said, a lot of different tactics. But the, it was really eye-opening for me, too, to see just people who were so sick, yeah. and just to see the, the turnaround in such yeah. a short amount of time. Yeah. I mean... I don't know how you watch that and don't think, yeah. wow. I mean, there's you know, always going to be people who are like, oh, they think Who are skeptical right? or, like, something like or something that. like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. True, um, but I think for most reasonable people who can go into a movie, at least open-minded enough to give it a chance, yeah. we'll kind of see that and be like, wow, well, okay, maybe there is something to this. Filmed, like, it's not like they're on Oprah or anything. Right. Like, you go into their houses, like, mm-hmm. and you see their their, you know, old couches and, like, all their pill bottles lined up on their mm-hmm. counters. And right, like yeah. you, you're you have a window into their life, so it's like mm-hmm. less. Um, it's like it feels authentic. It yeah. doesn't feel staged. I thought know? it was it was pretty crazy just how many pills they had to take and like yeah. like the amount of information they knew about the drugs that they were taking was <laughs> absurd to me. Like right. it was well, the it was like said this the doctor right that, no I know but also like not even that's not even what I meant. Like I I just meant like they were like oh yeah I had to take this 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 at this time but I can't take this with the and they just like yeah. they're just like wow you're medicine what? math yeah. right yeah like. <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to keep track of all those pills. Like that, you had like 15, 15, 15 yeah. 20 and can bottles. Can we go to the argument about it costing more? Because I, I know that that's always thrown out as one of the big arguments. Like, well, to you know, to go to Whole Foods costs a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
all those drugs cost somebody right. a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe you're getting them for reduced cost because you're on some program, but basically they're costing all of the right. country a yes. lot of money. If we want to lower taxes, we can maybe fix healthcare a little bit by making everyone a little less sick, maybe. Mm -hmm. All the libertarians out there should be okay with that. That's, so what, that's what I'm vegan. talking to. Like, <laughs> let's talk to those libertarians and, and Republicans out there. Like, you want to fix healthcare, which is the major cost to American government, is healthcare. Go vegan, and all the healthcare problems go down in, in cost to, mm -hmm. to practically nothing. You won't need doctors for the right. most part because most Mostly of the problems... break an arm. Right, yeah. exactly. We'll just need people yeah. to help fix broken arms. That's right. pretty much it. Which milk's not going to help with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, on that note, let's, uh, let's go to the reviews. So here is the Green Giants review. Uh, the documentary is simply nutritious. I ate it right up. <laughs> Eye-opening to say the least. Go plant-based, save yourself, save the world. Five. Stars. Nice. Wow. Nice. I like it. Yes. I love yeah. it. I want some more of it. Yes. Nick, are you ready? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I'm ready. Okay. I, don't, I don't know. I feel I don't. I don't want to like be everyone giving it fives, but like I'll, I'll give it a five. Uh, a five eggs. Five eggs. Five, five, eggs. five eggs. Okay. Rocky. Nice. All right. I am. I think I'm actually. I'm gonna go slightly. I'm gonna go okay. four point five. Um, cancer-filled sausages. Oh, that was good. Um, yeah, I really thought this was a great documentary. I liked it more than Cowspiracy. I felt like, you know, most of the information, or a lot of the information in this particular documentary was stuff I didn't know, and which really shocked me, and made me feel even better about being vegan. The one knock I have against it, I guess that brings it down a half point, is having seen Cowspiracy, I kind of saw maybe a little bit more the mechanisms of the documentary. I knew Kip wasn't as ignorant as he played at yeah, times. Yeah. So I was like, all right, all right. I kind of see the plot device here. I think it's maybe necessary as a plot device, but I saw the plot device, yeah. which took me out of it. But all the other st information in the movie was just was so compelling and mind blowing yeah. that it made up for any of that. So 4.5 cancer filled sausages. Yeah. There you go. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to give it five. Uh, what's his truck? Big blue. big blue? Yes, Big Blue. I mean, the only knock I have against him is he should be driving an EV. That's that true. Yeah, should be an electric come on, car, Kip. Yeah. Come on. Maybe maybe it is. He never knew. He uh, could have no, custom made it. Mm. Custom made it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw an exhaust. Well, when when the Tesla sem semi comes out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, well yeah. I don't know if he wants to tour around with a semi truck. <laughs> <laughs> With a big, you know, banner, it should be decked out with, you know, yeah. with, with the health on the side. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, five, five out of five, a big blues. Um, I just, yes, it did repeat the same kind of pattern as Cowspiracy, but mm -hmm. I thought that um, he tried so many different ways to catch you. Many of them were effective for me, and I think some of them were effective, you know, for other people. Um, and I just, I thought it really, yeah, the information in it blew me away. Um, I loved the, the fact that they were able to put cool graphics in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then just all the interviews with all the experts and doctors. Fantastic job. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. I'm also going to have to go with five decaying pigs. Mm, that's, <laughs> that's okay, though. I have a <laughs> okay, good. Um, yeah, I agree with everything you said. All the tactics he used really work on me. And um, I like Kip. And although, yeah, I was definitely on to his ignorant um, kind of... What, you won't interview? Playing yeah. down with the cool? His, his um, fake British trying to be American. <laughs> <laughs> It oh, still, yeah, it still right. got me. So um, definitely the layout of his films really work for me more mm -hmm. than other kind of documentaries that I've seen. And I feel like a lot of the information is broken down enough so that I can mm -hmm. definitely understand all of it. And it jumps around enough that I'm never bored or zoning out, which is really um, important when you're watching a documentary like this. Yeah, that, I was going to say, one thing I love about it, Dark Marys, too, that just occurred to me is how tight they are. Right. Mm -hmm. Tight 90 just, minutes. Yeah. You get in and out and with so much information in such mm -hmm. a short they, amount of time. Yeah. They really they jumped from information. Like, they went from, yeah. you know, like, I, I completely forgot the whole pig thing was in there because they just packed it with so much stuff. Yeah. It was just like graphics info, info, info. info. Yeah, yeah, the graphic yeah. game stepped up a little bit. Definitely. Yeah. 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 All right, um, so I think I'm going to give this one five out of five people mm -hmm. not dying out of cancer, from cancer in the next hundred years. Hopefully. Cool. Save people. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, um, people. <laughs> yes, I, I gave this movie a five. I never rate things that high, but this was just such a powerful movie to me. So researching the facts afterward, I, I looked into it, and a lot of them uh, gave scientific backgrounds. They were peer-reviewed. Mm -hmm. And... It's just so, so true what they're saying. And that's probably, you know, 
I did like Kip a lot more in this one because I remember me and Maya had a little bit of a debate on that <laughs> last time whether or not Kip was a good guy or. or I like him. I liked him a lot in this movie. Yeah, he was a he little bit. Has grown as a person. He has grown as a person. Uh, his ponytail was popping. Um, <laughs> I think that I really, I just, I like this movie. I recommend everyone go watch it because there's a lot of scary things about the things that we all eat, um, and uh, everyone, you know, you want to live longer. So, is it a horror movie? <laughs> it kind of is in a way. A thriller. It is in a way a horror <laughs> movie. Social, social, social thriller. thriller. I think yes. that if people sat down and took the time to watch the movie, uh, they would definitely be a little bit more skeptical about the things that they eat because a lot of it doesn't seem like things you can lie about uh, because they show. Like one more thing, I just want to bring up that definitely makes this kind of a horror movie was the pus thing. Remember the pus? Oh, that was so oh. gross. Yeah. Pus, yeah. That's a thing. That's disgusting. Yeah. And the, the fact yeah. that they were Do you want to eat pus? Awesome. Mm -hmm. So they, I mean, yeah. they said they have like a certain level of pus that you're yeah. allowed it's, to have in meat. It's fine. And if it's you just get like, this much pus. Yeah, it's like yeah. I don't want any pus. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like how about you heard it here first. <laughs> Nick Caffeine wants no pus. It'd be pus. cool if on packages they had to be like 85 percent pus free. Yeah. You know? yes. <laughs> and I just want to say I want to end this note on people who are just debating whether or not to go vegetarian or vegan. I just want to say I was on medicine for acne medication for a long time, back in high school. And uh, I went off it because I was just so sick of it, but I still had lots of problems with pimples. I'm like, oh my God, my skin is just, I'm breaking out every other day. And since I've cut out meat, which is about a month and a half ago. Your skin has been, My skin has, has gone. cleared up. Boop, yeah. My skin's cleared up. I and feel so better. And that's without medicine for it. I've lost 15 pounds almost wow. in the last month and a half. And wow. I just, you know, it's, it works. I guess it's, you can kind of, you know, See after some time. Wow, it works. Me and Nick were talking about this this morning. Right, what, yeah, yeah. what? I want to be a twenty-one year old with pimples. So what you know. made? What was the hardest part of changing your diet? Was it the? It was the decision to start. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you just that, kept fighting. You just kept being like, no, no. I didn't want to stop eating meat at all. Like I so loved what, meat. What know? pushed you over the edge? It was. Uh, there were a few. It was. I think the biggest thing for me that because I was kind of like trying not eating meat. But the biggest thing for me was watching Okja on Netflix. Mm -hmm. really? And I think, yes, I think that everyone needs to go watch that movie. It's a wonderful movie. I think we should do a review of it. We should do Okja mm -hmm. and we should do, uh, I just saw a documentary the other day that just Ooh. was eye-opening, Amanda Knox. Yes, so, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was a great one. I so heard of that. We're going to awesome awesome be doing Okja and Amanda Knox. That's, That's, a, nice little, That's a nice little true crime, sort of, yeah. but not Ooh. interesting. A little, there's a little, you, the, you, you watch and you find out. I'm excited. Yeah. It's interesting. Ooh. It's a good one. So, yes, uh, yeah, that was, for me, Okja. Interesting. So I, I like think that. But, yeah. I mean, if you had seen Okja out of the blue without ever having seen, like, you know, Cowspiracy or what the health? Do you think that that would have been enough? You think it's just probably the it was the, the, the last straw, maybe. I think it was the, the what pushed me over the edge. Right. I think okay. it, it made the final decision for me to be like, no, not just interesting. Doing that. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. interesting. Let us know below if you have gone vegan. What was what was the kind of final straw for you? Was there a movie? Was there a friend? Uh, was there a fact that kind of pushed you over the edge, or was it just you know it was just the culmination of lots of things right um, and if you aren't vegan yet or vegetarian yeah what's comment stopping? what's what you think might be stopping yeah what's mm -hmm. stopping you exactly yeah, yeah. cool because well, there's, there's a lot of reasonable things that can stop people right mm -hmm. all right all right but maybe the pus will push you over the edge <laughs> maybe the pus it could be that well thank you so much for watching everybody this episode of <laughs> Okay. Is that it? Is that the end? <laughs> yeah. I like that ending. <laughs> <laughs> just watched, uh, a million like and subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. Thank you for our intern, Brett, for doing the cameras. Yes. This is the end plate. We're dancing to some songs. Having some fun. I'm plugging on my